And I'd like to welcome everybody to our first uh, Zoom lecture of the semester. Um, John Jacob Myers is uh, coming to us from New York and uh, I'll let him introduce himself and um, the floor is yours. Oh, okay, great. Um, okay, yeah, that's uh, that's me, John Jacob Myers. Um, okay, so I'm a, I'm a New York, I've been a New York artist for 20 years. Um, um, mostly in Brooklyn, but recently I moved out to the suburbs like old people do. And, um, uh, and uh, I have more space here, which is nice. And uh, so yeah, so I have like a, I have a two car garage that's my painting studio. Then I have a basement complex. That's my printmaking print shop for printmaking because I do that too. And then I have a wood shop for making all the things I love to make. So um, that aren't painting and printmaking. So um, um, I just, oh, sorry. I just said to approve that um, we're being recorded. Okay, so um, yeah. And so I, um, I've, yeah, I've been doing the painting thing since the seventies uh, when I, but I'm not gonna go that far back. Uh, and um, I was playing video games even earlier than that. <laughs> and I make, I make a lot of art about video games. So I think what, um, maybe what I'll do is, is kind of talk a little bit about my history um, as you're looking at images so that you have some visual sort of like um, stimulation. Okay, so I'm gonna do screen share in just a second. And okay, I have two, two keynote um, uh, slide presentations. I'm gonna do the old stuff first, try to go in kind of chronological order. And, um, uh, and I'm gonna, um, rather than be in this um, kind of navigator format, I'm gonna try to play it. Can you still see it? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so um, these are some early paintings from right around graduate school. I went to, um, I studied undergrad at the University of New Hampshire uh, uh, and they had a very, um, uh, very figuratively oriented program, but it was, it's, um, it's modern, it was modern figuration. They kind of uh, pushed a kind of perceptual approach to, to um, representation and um, Cezanne was one of their big heroes. And um, I wasn't as interested in that. I was interested in, in doing and uh, creating, um, al I guess, I didn't know. I didn't know they were called allegories at the time, but they, um, but the, the kind of I wanted to do work that wasn't so much about kind of perception and and um, uh, and kind of formal concerns of the early modern artists, but I'm more interested in the works of the old masters and the kind of narrative content they um, their works uh, had, and so. Um, this is a painting I did um, in response to Hurricane Hugo that, um, that ripped through um, my home in Charleston, South Carolina um, back in the late 80s, 89, I think it was when that happened. Um, and, and yeah, and so I kind of set up a situation with um, a man and a bull. Uh, the bullet for me kind of like represented nature. Uh, in the middle of a kind of vicious storm. Um, this is this is a painting that I did. Uh, hey, let's get <laughs> let's spice things up, get the ball rolling. Okay, this is a painting I did in graduate school, my first year uh, at Yale in '88. Uh, and my father's a cattle farmer. Well, he passed away a couple of years ago, but I <laughs> I still think of him in the present tense sometimes. But anyways. Um, yeah, so I, I kind of grew up on a cattle farm um, and we, it was a breeding farm. So we did artificial insemination. And um, this was a time when, you know, a lot of my peers were uh, at Yale were kind of um, bucking the sort of the pressure to do more kind of formal, um, more abstract works um, and do do works that were more more conceptual and um and i felt like i had this uh wellspring of content with the um with the cattle farm that i wanted to tap into and um 
I participated in these artificial inseminations and other kinds of activities, but I didn't do it in the nude like this. But you know, that, that's how it becomes a kind of allegory for me is it's, it, it starts to become so, so much more than, um, than simply a kind of documentation, right? It, it, I wanna raise questions about um, what, what um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, WTF are we doing with nature in the post-industrial, you know, world? <laughs> okay. So um, this is a painting uh, that I did on, um, I was on a Fulbright fellowship in Italy um, right after graduate school. And uh, I was just channeling, you know, 15th century Florentine painting and uh, especially, well, actually, I say Florentine, but you know the painting that really uh, blew me away was by Giovanni Bellini, and it's um, uh, it was in the Uffizi, so it's in Florence. But it, but Bellini was actually a Venetian, so um, I don't know if you guys um, are familiar, but the the the, um, the the competition between Venice and Florence was a little bit like you know the Red Sox and the Yankees <laughs> so, uh, during the 15th century. So uh, yeah, read Vasari if you're curious about that. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so there's, um, I got really into linear perspective. Um, as you can see, I'm really into light. Uh, I love capturing quality of light. Uh, this is a mountaintop um, in New Hampshire where, uh, near where my family's farm was. And um, so gee, I did a series of GI Joe action figures. So you're just seeing like one of, um, of one painting for each group of paintings because there's just too much to show and, <laughs> and not take like, um, you know, um, more than an hour. So I'm gonna just like cut this, keep this down to like 45 minutes or so. Okay, so this is, um, uh, this is called Frontier Fever. It's a painting I did in the late 90s. I was teaching at the University of New Hampshire. And, um, uh, and that, the de that decade was a decade of being an academic. And I, when hey, I show, I'm sorry. I don't think your slides are forwarding. They're what? I don't think you're switching slides. Oh, what do you see? Uh, the bull. Okay. Hold on. Sorry about that. Um, okay, this is the bull. <laughs> okay, this is the, um, can you see this? Right. Okay, so um, because play mode in Keynote wasn't working with you guys, so I'm gonna, I'm switching to, um, to the navigator format. So we, you have a lot of extra interface, but hopefully you can still see things. Um, okay, so that's the artificial insemination painting that I was talking about. Hey, that's not too bad having that kind of a technical glitch. I had a lecture once where the, um, the collar that holds the slides down had loosened and all the slides fell out in the middle of the talk. <laughs> So I don't think that's going to happen here. Uh, fingers crossed. Okay, so um, this is the this is the painting when I was talking about um, the Fulbright Fellowship in in uh, Florence, Italy. I was working on this painting um, uh, as well as a bunch of others. This is a GI Joe um, action figure uh, and self portrait. Yeah, I, I forgot how many nude self-portraits I did back in the 90s. Uh, that's kind of, looking back on it, it seems kind of weird. But um, this painting, because uh, I, don't, I don't do self-portraits anymore, but um, hardly, hardly at all, actually. But um, this painting is actually shaped like that. It's, it's not a distorted image. And um, it's... Uh, it's part of a, a small group of paintings that I did. They're actually large paintings. It's, you know, it's about seven feet wide, uh, but there are only a handful of them or so. And um, moving into sort of the late 90s, 
that's a, the head of George Washington from the dollar bill, the Gilbert Stewart portrait kind of stretched across the sky there. And, um, I, you know, I was kind of concerned with patrimony and um, meaning like the, the legacy that um, um, can men in my culture and men in my family pass down to me. And, um, and then there's a, um, there's a little G.I. Joe action figure down here in the bottom in, in the and not the bottom, but in the look, the left, um, mimicking um, my um, self-immolation. It's the it's the um, it's it's paintings like uh, the paintings of uh, of Leonardo of uh, Saint Jerome beating himself uh, in the chest with a rock. That's uh, kind of the inspiration for these these um, kind of lonely figure in the wilderness. Um, uh, kinds of um, uh, rit sort of ritual um, violence. Um, uh, around, around the turn of the century, I, I got involved in wood engraving in a big way. And these are the, um, these are the wood engravings uh, that I did. I, what I did, uh, what I wanted to do was a, um, uh, trans translate a poem by James Dickey into um, into American Sign Language. It's, um, it was a big project. I worked with a um, con congenitally deaf um, performer uh, interpreter and he, um, he acted out the, um, the poem by James Dickey for me and I, and I uh, rendered it as, um, as individual wood engravings. Uh, wood engravings, you see, that's the end grain of the tree. It's like five inches in diameter. And you can, I don't know if you can see me on your screen, but I'm holding it up like that. Okay. So anyways, it's about five inches in diameter. That's, that's the actual cross cut of the tree. And every one of these images is a cross cut. That's about, you know, seven eighths of an inch thick. And, and so I render a different um, a hybrid, human hybrid, human monster, human um, machine hybrid um, from uh, science fiction, fantasy, mythology, and um, using sign language as the sort of lingua franca, the sort of common tongue um, by which they all are communicating that, um, that perspective of being half human and half something else. That's what the James Dickey poem is about. It's about, it's a, it's a poem in the voice of, um, of a half human, half sheep. And engraving is, is so you're carving on the end grain. It's not like woodcut. Um, maybe when we get to the question and answers, if people aren't clear on that, I can kind of get into that, but, um, you might recognize some of these figures. It, um, you know, all kinds of zombie uh, flicks, a metropolis, um, everything. Some of my, the last self-portraits that I did, um, Doctor Who, um, Medusa, um, Seven of Eight. Uh, I'm just like mining all of the, all of the sci-fi, fantasy, and mythology and Frankenstein and all that that I, that I um, consumed as a kid. And I'm bringing them all together in this one um, wordless book. A lot of Star Trek. Um, this is uh, Lieutenant Ripley from uh, Aliens. Max Headroom. This is the whole project. Um, lots and lots of little blocks of wood um, and each one car carved uh, like that. And then there's many more. I, I'm only showing you a kind of selection of them because I got to move on. So um, yeah, and that, that work uh, continued and it, it kind of evolved into um, regular wood cuts which are done on the plank side of the wood, not the end grain. End grain is one thing. The plank side, you use different tools to carve that. Um, I'm a printmaker and a painter. And so I did a series of paintings for um, uh, 
uh, that coincided with um, with the exhibition of the um, uh, the, uh, the the book of wood engravings, and um, and these are all um, similar kinds of figures. Some some of them are are in the book. Others aren't. I don't I don't know if this one is. Okay, uh, and so I think, yeah, I think that's it. Except all here, I'll stop. I'll stop with this keynote here, and then move on to the next one. This painting is um, is about seven by eight feet, and um, that's my dog Snorkel. Um, he's recently passed away, unfortunately, um, and um, this is. This is one of many of, of many paintings I've done that are kind of um, they're uh, cre creating an, an imaginary scene in a in um, in a famous film and um, kind of reconstructing it with other films. So this is Linda Lovelace faking an orgasm. So, so Linda Lovelace from Deep Throat is playing the role of of um, Meg Ryan in When Harry Met Sally. Um, and so Deep Throat was the sort of coming out um, into the mainstream. Uh, it's the first mainstream porn film ever made. And, um, and, and yet it's still, you know, that whole genre for the most part is just very exploitive. Um, in the 80s, there was a backlash against um, that so-called, you know, liberation of the 70s that uh, subjected a lot of people to exploitation, and um, that makes Tarantino really happy because <laughs> uh, he's made a whole career out of that stuff. But um, oh, sorry about my cursor just like wandering over the picture. But anyways, um, yeah. So Meg Ryan's um, sort of faking an orgasm in the diner in in New York is just and um, and and uh, Rob Reiner's uh, like mother or something uh, is says I'll have what she's having uh, in the dining that's her right there and um, yeah Billy Crystal and everybody oh and this is Vin Diesel's head but he has a grateful Vin Diesel would never have a, have a grateful dead tattoo on the top of his head so that's that just proves that this is all make-believe <laughs> but uh, anyways I clearly I have too much fun making my the art that I make. So I'm gonna pop out of this and go to this other um, this other slideshow that's the more recent work that's been that's um, I'm more kind of known for now and has been showing a lot more. So um, yeah, so uh, let me click on screen share again. God, I've been doing this Zoom thing for you know, a couple of years now, or no, a year and a half, and I'm still kind of fumbling with it. Yeah, this is it. Okay, I'm gonna switch to navigator mode and hopefully that'll work fine for us. Oh, wait a second. Can you see the slide okay here? Yeah. Okay. Huh. Okay, so I'm gonna just, I'm just going to reduce reduce my window, make it so that the image looks a little bit bigger. That gets rid of the sort of the extra images on the side. We can focus on the main image. So this painting is eight foot by eight foot. It's um it's part of that sign language series, and um, so this is this is based on the the movie um, Attack of the Fifty Foot Woman, um, which is which is um, the story in a nutshell is um, this, this woman who's kind of uh, frustrated with her marriage because her husband is kind of cheating on her and, um, uh, and is with this woman down at the, lo at the, uh, at the local sort of uh, bar or whatever. And, um, and aliens land nearby. She wanders into the um, into the the spaceship, gets infected, and then um, and then she becomes enormous, and um, and she's 
and the combination of being enormous and full of rage over, over her um, husband's infidelity uh, makes for quite a sort of be uh, horror of uh, spectacle. But what I did was I kind of turned it into um, uh, a, a, a painting about um, a, conf a certain kind of like um, different manifestation, a, a few different manifestations of um, female um, sort of rage. And then this is Agnes Moorhead on the top of this building here. And she's, um, Agnes Moorhead um, play, played this, um, this alien woman in uh, Twilight Zone who winds up being terrorized by these, um, these NASA astronauts who land, who happen to be um, normal size, but the, the planet they land on, everybody is enormous. And so there's Agnes Moorhead destroying the NASA spaceship on the top of this um, um, check caching um, uh, uh, um, store, which is uh, in Gowanus and Red Hook in Brooklyn. This is all Brooklyn landscape down here. Okay, uh, yeah, I probably way over explained that. <laughs> uh, let's just um, hmm. Boy, go on to the next one. I think I have to go into Navigator to go to the next one because it there's no arrow that I can see. Okay, so this painting, um, this painting is called Zombie Senate, and um, again, I'm like, I'm a big fan. I'm a big movie fan, and um, it's uh, seven by nine feet. Um, and I, I, took a, I took a vintage photograph from, from when that used to be a skylight over the US Senate. Uh, the ceiling used to be open like this. And, um, and it was that way for a long time because I think that's how it was when, when Jimmy Stewart um, played uh, Mr. Mr. Smith and Mr. Smith goes to Washington, Senator, the young Senator from Arizona who was trying to, trying to get, um, land allocated for a scout camp and um and the senate was so corrupt they um he couldn't get it done without doing this filibuster and winning the hearts and minds of people all over the country um anyways he failed um i have a detail here here he is um down he's i think he's turning into a zombie anyways he's he collapses in the movie um but still wins the day. I don't know how that happens. But um, anyways, this is this is Sigourney Weaver, the the, the badass um, Lieutenant Ripley from Aliens with uh, her loader, um, ripping out pages of um, of the Constitution. Um, or actually, I guess she's holding up the Constitution. Anyways, she's she's the um, she's the heroine here. Um, she's she's my heroine. And, um, and there's, my, there's my dog snorkel. Um, and then I did, a, I did some woodcuts um, of the same, uh, the same scene. So I built a 3D model in Maya of the US Senate. You know, you can just go online and, uh, and I don't think you even have to buy these. You can just get for free. Um, 3D models of US Senate um, senators' desks. And then it's an OBJ and you just sort of like import it into Maya and just build out your Senate chamber. It was, um, that was a lot of fun. And then I set up these surveillance camera kind of positions for viewing the invasion of the zombies. Um, yeah, so when, um, when January 6th happened, uh, uh, everybody, all my, all my old friends uh, told me, oh my God, I was, that's all I was thinking about was your painting of the, of the zombies invading the Senate. Um, anyways, uh, along with that work that, I, that was part of my first show at Polson Gallery, which is the gallery that still represents me in, in, um, in Copenhagen, um, 
I also showed some paintings of um, of of uh, kind of, it, it, of sort of teenagers in their fantasy like private spaces in in the attic or basement of of their house. So it was it was a kind of series of attics and basement paintings. And then this this one, um, she's she she has all her science fiction books up here. This is where she reads them. Um, that's the kind of that's the kind of kid I was. I I I was either in the attic or the basement doing something that got me away, or in a clubhouse out in the woods doing something that got me away from um, my parents' world. And then my second show um, at Polson was in like I think 2016 or 2017, and it was a series of paintings based on video games. Now I started playing a uh, Pong. I don't know if you guys know that game, but I was playing Pong back in the seventies, played um, Pac-Man and Galaga and those, and those arcade games in the eighties. I played Doom when it first, first came out in the early nineties. And um, I think I got addicted to it. And then I overcame that addiction um, or extreme habit or whatever it was. And now I you now I play video games every once in a while, but they don't really I don't they don't really interfere with my like you know my activities. Um, yeah, so uh, so so I'm shifting from movies to video games, and I have this philosophy that um, that that our our century of watching movies made us passive viewers. We sit there in a movie theater or in front of the television and just watch the action go um, happen before us. And we're, we're clearly frustrated with it because as soon as the remote control came out, there's always somebody just like pushing the buttons on that thing, right? So um, I think video games um, and the move towards VR is, um, is an, a really kind of welcome contribution to um, our culture. And it's 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 proven its worth because it's it's um it, it's a bigger industry than Hollywood is, believe it or not. Uh, look at the numbers. Anyways, this is from uh, Doom. Um, I I think it's yeah it's um it's that it's one of the higher levels of the of the Doom of the original Doom uh, first person shooter. Um, um, game engine um, and it's called Against the Wickedly. And the, what you had to do was run along this sort of this ledge up here and jump into this square and then kill a lot of um, round like orange lava demons. Um, man, was that fun. Um, anyways, uh, this is, this is, um, inspired by Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Now, you know, I bet some of you are wondering like, why is everything wood grained? Um, and um, this is why I like the navigator mode. Um, the wood grain, I, I built plywood clubhouses in the woods when I was a kid. Uh, I vacationed with my parents at my grandparents' place, which was a pine cottage. Um, our, our farm was all just wood, 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 wood was everywhere. Um, but especially the wood in the pine cottage the, of my grandparents' summer cottage was all this varnished pine tongue and groove paneling. And um, yeah, and I was just like, I, I just really got into that and um, in, into the sort of illusionism of the wood grain. I went to Home Depot back when they used to have um, a bookshelf, I don't know if they do anymore, but they have like how-to technique books. And there was one book that says how to do faux wood grain. And I, so I bought it and I opened it up and I couldn't believe it. The techniques for faux wood grain are just like what I was teaching at the New York Academy, indirect painting techniques where you layer colors on top of each other and you create the illusion through the optical mixing. And, um, and so I just fell in love with with all the different kinds of illusionism I could create with it. And, um, and so a lot of the work, especially the, the video game uh, paintings 
I, I'm doing faux wood grain of, um, of um, uh, rotary sawn plywood, the kind of plywood that's used for, um, to, for sort of um, construction site fencing all over New York. And it's usually covered in, in graffiti pretty, pretty darn fast. So, um, so I started including the graffiti, not being a graffiti artist myself, and also because, because these are, they're conceived as sort of taking fragments from construction sites, which I did as a kid, drag them into the, into the woods and build clubhouses with. So, so these um, plywood reconstructions of video game scenarios are kind of the ultimate fantasy that I was never fulfilled as a kid, um, that you could actually reconstruct these media worlds um, in, in real life, make them tangible. And um, this is, uh, I think this is, I think this is from Halo. So this is uh, more, this is more recent. Um, and I think this is Doom. This is Doom. That's Andre the Giant. Oh, there's two Andre the Giants there. Um, this is uh, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein, and this is too. This this painting is called Early Spring. No, so the most of these um, these little video game paintings are uh, are twenty eight by twenty eight inches. Okay, and um, and you can see that um, the this one, the figure has is going under the surface, and this happens a lot in video games. I'm I'm really intrigued by these kind these glitches in video game, um, in in the sort of the video the um, the gameplay space. You know these sort of things that happen there that don't um, that don't make sense or aren't supposed to happen if the narrative is. Or not the narrative if the um, if the game is written correctly, but but um, game designers they just don't put a lot of effort into what happens to the the um, your enemy after they're vanquished. The body falls, and sometimes it falls right through something. And um, I think they actually sort of enjoy the fact that the um, the the believability of the fiction is allowed to be sort of um, sacrificed at that moment because um, they are so kind of, they inhabit that, um, that VR space of the video game um, uh, software so fully that it just seems natural that that's what, that's what a, um, would happen, and it's called it's called um, uh, kind of no clip no clipping. Um, I guess clipping is when you you would if the figure fell, it would bump into something. Um, but in this case, it's falling onto a horizontal plane instead of falling onto the the um, the um, the sloped plane of the landscape. Uh, this is also Return to Castle Wolfenstein. And um, this, is, um, this is a large painting. I think it's about like 50 by 50 inches, um, not based on any video game. It's, uh, uh, there was a painting by Peter Bruegel of, uh, of two butts cut, sticking out of a, of a two-holer. Um, two holer is a type of it's a type of outhouse or kind of toilet structure that you'd see in kind of rural areas. Like we had a two holer at my family's farm. It was like a you know it's a colonial farm, so <laughs> the two holer is probably really old. I I would never go in a two holer with with somebody. I'd rather do it alone, but I guess maybe if they didn't have much time, they'd have two. I don't know. I don't know why they would do that. But um, but in this Bruegel painting from the you know from the 16th century, 
there's these two butts sticking out of the side of a building. And it's in that whole painting was a, a kind of allegory about, uh, um, it was, it was, uh, it was a painting called the Netherlandish Proverbs. And there's just all kinds of things like that. So there's somebody's fishing in the stream just below where these guys are taking a dump. Um, and, and I, I kind of wanted to make, um, rather than be an anecdote within a painting, I wanted to make a, an entire painting about that kind of um, behavior because that's, that's exactly what we do all the time. And um, so this is called, um, I think it's Kids at the Pool. Do you guys know the expression? I got to drop the kids off of the pool. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah, my my dealer did, said I can't sell that thing. <laughs> and then, well, then he did. So I was lucky. Okay, I haven't made another one. Um, okay, so this is oh, this is annoying. I got these frames here. Okay. Um, Clearly, I'm an example of an artist who um, enjoys who, who enjoys um, uh, humor in my work. I hope that's okay. Um, this um, this is my wife modeled for this. I I, I got her strapped into this makeshift um, uh, kind of uh, re repelling or tram kind of uh, yeah. I think it's repelling kind of gear in my studio. I have an I have an I-beam here with an engine hoist. So I just got a, I hooked her up to that and, and took the photo. And um and it the painting's called Taken. And it's um it's based on the scene from um Return to Castle Castle Wolfenstein. But man did it take forever to do all the wood grain in here. This is 50 by 50 inches. So there's just like a hundred sheets of plywood in here each one i had to do the wood grain on um and there's like maybe 200 in this one it's crazy it's just too much um this is called frack me gently it's it kind of alludes to um, a movie called heathers from uh, back in the early 90s with uh, winona Ryder. well i think is winona Ryder in it i think she is yeah okay um and um, yeah, the, uh, th this is a really large painting. It's about seven feet wide. Um, yeah, and I'm starting to get into fractals. So I'm using fractal geometry in some of these, uh, especially this one and this one. Um, so I have a fractal generator that, that, um, that I export polygons from. And, um, and uh, I'm looking at the time, uh, it's 1016. So, I'll, get, I'll try to give us time for um, for some questions. Um, yeah, and so this is, um, I don't think this is fractal. I just kind of built this out, sculpted this myself, but I was thinking of, um, of, of uh, what are they called? Uh, ge ge geodes or, yeah, there's a, the, um, the crystallization inside kind of rocks. Um, and um, and I've um, I'm really interested in uh, in this taking this this fantasy this sort of fantasy clubhouse um, alternative reality made of plywood idea taking it to different places and one of the places I take it to. Is, is to this kind of idea of, of um, sports in the future. Like how far are we gonna push the human body um, in, um, in doing extreme sports? And are we going to have to, and we probably are, and we already are, um, uh, augmenting the body um, with, um, with different machinery, uh, creating creating the early form of cyborg, and um, and so there's a lot of that kind of sport activity going on in my paintings. This is a large painting; it's about six feet wide, and um, 
these um, these women and girls are are climbing. Um, well, I don't need to explain it. I don't think they're these are um, these are um, climbing wall uh, handholds um, of different shapes to simulate uh, an actual uh, an actual cliff. We have these. Um, you probably have them out by you guys too. Um, we we have this um, this chain of um, of climbing gyms in uh, in New York called uh, Brooklyn Boulder. Oh my God! It's like they saw my paintings and then they made. <laughs> no, they didn't see my paintings. But it's just it's just a kind of wonderful coincidence that like my paintings are these like massive plywood constructions, and that's exactly what they do is make these massive plywood construction. I love it. Anyways, I got into landscape recently. I've been doing a lot of landscapes. It gets really foggy here. And I'm just south of Sleepy Hollow. If you ever heard of the, was it Washington Irving, um, uh, uh, Legend of Sleepy Hollow? Am I right on that? Is that the right? Yeah. Um, the, um, yeah, it's really spooky uh, here. <laughs> the, uh, they we have I don't know if back in uh, back in the 19th century they had as many vines as they have now but the vines are just growing everywhere and with you combine that with the fog and the the landscape just um, turns um, really um, uh, I don't know it's just very it's magical in a in a horrifying way um, and um, this is uh, uh, this is one of these landscapes. So this is this is what happens in in the um, the abandoned. You know, we have like woods in between highways because there's so many highways. Um, uh, people ha people have to drive into the city. They can't take the train, right? So um, there we have right next to me. It's absolutely obscene. We have two major highways coming uh, right next to each other. And then right between them is this kind of wooded area that nobody cares about. And, um, and the vines have just taken over. And look at this, these vines here, they've, um, they've, uh, they killed the tree. They strangled the tree. The tree has, is rotting and falling apart. The vines are still keeping it um, above ground while while the vines are migrating to this other tree <laughs> and it's it's just insane what what's going on out there it's a vicious it's a vicious place a dark forest that's what it is that's a great novel by the way science fiction novel uh, dark forest. It's the I think it's the book two of uh, Xi, Xi Jin Lu's uh, trilogy, um, the Three Body Problem trilogy. Okay, so this is um, this is a, a woodcut. Um, oh no, I think it's a lino cut. But lino, my lino cuts and woodcuts look very much alike. It's about twenty four by thirty two inches, something like that. Uh, same as this. And uh, so this is, okay, so now we're getting into stuff I've been doing during COVID. Um, I decided to teach myself how to do the Meniere Noir technique in lithography. And um, this is a technique where you scratch into a, a blackened surface on a lithostone, and then you process it with gum Arabic and the gum Arabic sticks to where you scratched. And um, uh, yeah, it just seems like, uh, why don't more people do this? It's so it's so satisfying. Um, it's like it's, it's so much better than the scratch boards we had in high school art class. Um, this is self portrait um, as a kind of a hybrid creature, I guess, um, or at least my ears are um, that I did when I started exploring that technique. I've done a, I've done maybe twenty of these um, lithographs, and I'm I'm gonna teach a, a masterclass in that um, this, uh, this fall. Um, uh, you know, so these are paintings that I, I guess I did them just before COVID started actually. Um, this is COVID. Okay, so this is, this is the year 2020, the, the phases of the moon, which is a kind of 
pretentious way of saying of the months. <laughs> and um, in the year 2020, the full moon, I think the full moon happened in the middle of most months. And, um, and I'll just walk you through and then we can kind of, um, hopefully we'll have time for questions. So um, this is, um, yeah, this is phase one, January um, of 2020. This is, it's, it has begun. Um, oh, and all of these little, a lot of these snowflakes are the shape of, uh, of, um, of the, that's too much explaining, but I've already started. So now I have to tell you, I guess, uh, they're COVID, um, COVID viruses. And um, this is a pro wrestler. I, I watch a lot of pro wrestling. Well, and I don't watch a lot, but I'm really intrigued by it. This sort of, as a kind of emblems of justice um, for, um, for a kind of, for uh, general culture, cultural consumption. Um, this is The Undertaker, another um, pro wrestler. Um, this is the month of March, uh, April. May. I love how the crows are, they are so smart. They're just chasing after all the predatory birds. Um, and um, let's see, well, that was May, this is June. Do you recognize that? So, Sasquatch. Oh, and that's my cat, Sasquatch, he's the same name named after Sasquatch. Um, what's this, July? Um, this is August, September, phase nine, phase 10. This is November of 2020, and this is December. And these are the new paintings that I uh, just showed in Copenhagen uh, in August. And um, I'm really getting into tech, into like optical techniques. Um, um, Rhea Ripley, um, another, she's punk um, for a wrestler. And uh, this is just an in, installation shot of that painting. And that's it. That's, this, is, um, this is a painting that's, um, that, uh, that alludes to the, the movie Titanic. Um, and you have um, you have Kate and Leo down here, um, but they have wetsuits, so they're, they're going to be okay. Um, anyways, that's it. Should I stop the screen share? Uh, you can stop the screen share, and okay. uh, I will take a second to say thank you very much for your talk. Uh, like I said, we're gonna we're gonna switch off the uh, recording so we can have questions. But I do okay. want to tell everybody the great news that you will be doing an exhibition with us uh, next year in September. So we'll get to see the work here. So I'm really excited to have your work come out west, and it's gonna be a great show. So um, with that, we'll stop recording, and then we can take questions here. <laughs>